Hi everyone and uh, welcome to Just a Meme podcast where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Today we have Janet and Sam joining us from Widget Mag, a, hu a web-based humor magazine experimenting with web monetization to pay writers from underrepresented groups in their field. Good to have you guys. Thanks for having Pleasure us. to be here. So uh, yeah, kind of jumping straight into the questions, I guess maybe tell us a bit about yourself and what your journey has been so far kind of leading up to this point um well, i can get us started yeah. mm -hmm. you could i i do want to address the elephant in the room and uh send greg my condolences you know the people of the united kingdom have suffered a great loss recently a beacon of light through turbulent waters and janet and i just wanted to send our well wishes uh to the people of her Ma her majesty's empire Thank you. They, uh, on behalf of the UK, I uh, accept those condolences. <laughs> With that out of the way, I think Janet was going to get us started unless yeah. she had some words she wanted yeah, to Yeah, thanks for that, Sam. Okay. <laughs> Saying what we were all thinking. Okay, so I don't know how far back in time you want us to go, but so Sam and I went to grad school together, post-grad, many, many years ago. We became fast friends. We were talking like a decade ago, and something that we really bonded over was our shared sense of humor. We kind of liked all the same funny things and years passed and life happened and I was going to be moving away from Toronto where we both were living and we were looking for a way to keep in touch and thought that maybe doing this comedy thing was a good way to just keep the friendship alive, keep yeah. the collaboration alive. So we started a podcast in 2018 called Work It, which is a, a sketch comedy podcast about jobs at work and the tragic comedy of late capitalism. And that was on like a local campus radio station and also still going on uh, Harbinger Media Network. That was sort of our, our start in comedy together. We took some Second City training classes and just found that we work really well together as a, a comedy writing pair. I think we complement each other very well in our comedy stylings. From my perspective, fast forward to September, 2020, and Sam got in touch with me and was like, listen, I applied for this grant, didn't tell you about it. What do you think of starting a web magazine? <laughs> so, so you weren't doing a web magazine before the grant, but you kind of I can fill it. in the gaps yeah, real yeah. quick. There's yeah, the part so. where I didn't CC Janet on relevant <laughs> emails. Um, <laughs> We did, we were sort of squatting on a URL and just using it as a place to like dump funny blog posts that we came up with and uh, especially myself couldn't get published anywhere else. Um, so yeah, it was just basically a personal humor blog under like a brand name. But then Matt Sancom, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Matt S of the Hard Times uh, punk satire website uh, put out a tweet saying, you know, any any web comedy publisher should get in touch about an exciting opportunity, blah, blah, blah. So I did, and he welcomed us into what was the Coil Comedy Bundle, um, which you can learn more about at coil.com forward slash comedy. These are just like a collection of uh, Coil web monetized comedy websites. And then, yeah, the grant for the web RFP followed pretty soon after that. Like Janet was saying, with all our grad school background, luckily we're well equipped to write uh, grant proposals and bullshit our way through uh, that process. So that's what we did. That's what I did without consulting my co-editor. And luckily, yeah, the my bullshitting skills paid off to the tune of a mid-tier grant for the web grant. So we had to quickly professionalize and turn it from a personal humor blog and host for our podcast into a magazine, the you know vast bulk of the work of which comes from contributors. Okay, cool. And that, how, yeah, what was that process like? Like bringing in new people into the fold? Like, how did you guys manage that? I guess in, in quite a short time frame, I'm guessing. <laughs> I would Pretty say sure. we managed it very successfully. <laughs> very successfully, <laughs> even. <laughs> yeah, we, we did definitely get overwhelmed. I'll, I'll say my perspective on that, and Janet can jump in. It, um, I took some online Second City classes as well with uh, then. Second City Online instructor, Caitlin Kunkel, who uh, previously was a co-founder of the sort of feminist-focused online humor uh, magazine, The Belladonna. Um, and Caitlin is very well connected. She's helping us with one aspect of our uh, grant project, specifically coming up with a sort of uh, equity guideline to make sure 
you know, we have some sort of accountability in terms of not just saying we're about it, but being demonstrably about it. Uh, okay. But like I was saying, Caitlin is very, very well connected. Um, her tweets about, you know, pitching our website are probably the most like retweeted tweets about the site. And that got us a lot of visibility and a lot of, uh, a lot of incoming pitches. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. In pretty much every sense, we would be nowhere without Caitlin. Um, she, she was a tremendous mentor in the development process of the website. Um, really just overflowing with wisdom about how to manage that. And then uh, she just steered so many people our way when it was time to, to uh, accept pitches. And yeah. yeah, so grateful to her. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great to have an advocate like that who has kind of such a standing already because it really speed, greases the wheels and speeds up the process in many And I ways. think it also speaks to, um you know, the, the bad economics of web publishing. And, you know, maybe that's just a fact of life. Like maybe doing it for the love is inescapable, unfortunately, but I think people are, you know, champing at the bit for relatively well-paid writing opportunities. Like we got a bunch of pitches mm -hmm. from people who, uh, you know, who didn't read what we're looking for per se, but are just looking for a decently paying writing opportunity, which, uh, is unfortunate, but I guess that's the reality. There aren't a lot of those opportunities out there. Um, and there aren't a lot of opportunities out there that pay well, um, yeah. pay kind of a fair rate for the amount of work that you're asking a writer to do. And that's very important to us. Um, one more thing about kind of bringing in writers uh, and people who weren't already, you know, part of our networks or anything like that. Um, a, a big tenet for us is uh, bringing in emerging writers, people who don't have a byline or have very few bylines at this point. What does um, that mean? Sorry? What does not, byline mean? Oh, it's just not previously published. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. citation if you're academic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, something you can point to and say, look, I wrote this. Yep. Uh, and somebody published it. So it's really important to us that we publish those people, um, people who just haven't had those opportunities yet to get published and get paid for it. And uh, Caitlin helped us develop submission guidelines as well. And they're really extensive submission guidelines. It's way more detailed than pretty much any other <laughs> web magazine submission guidelines. And it's really taking a new writer sort of step-by-step step through the process of like, here's how you can work on ideas Here's how you can develop ideas. Here's how you write a pitch. Um, we're going to help you through that process, the submission and drafting process, kind of every step of the way. Um, because we really want to draw in those new writers and give them the confidence to just send their first pitch, uh, publish their first piece. And so we've been bringing in a lot of emerging writers, which has been really, really cool to see. Yeah. And one more thing on that, actually, is um, we also use some of our grant money to license or commission free comedy writing classes for those emerging writers to sort of, you know, take a funny idea and craft it into something with meat on the bones, you know, turn something from what might otherwise just be a jokey tweet into something that can sustain 500 words. Uh, and if your listeners are interested, they can find those at widgetmag.com forward slash classes. We've got two free intro to humor writing classes that yeah are just open to the world to enjoy so you long as you sign up for a newsletter, newsletter. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> small small detail <laughs> no, no no that's great it's quite extensive then i, I didn't quite realize it went uh, so, so deep into like the um onboarding or access to the un underrepresented communities i guess that is the probably the main bit of your um, project then? How many how many writers did you kind of end up with or shortlist and then kind of fin finalize? We're about halfway through our uh, grant funded project now. So by the end of it, it will be in the neighborhood of 120, I think. Uh, wow. That's the bulk of which is actually written pieces. And then a sliver of that is also uh, people performing their pieces on our podcast. Okay. So it's like voice, uh, voice actors as well as well sort of thing or they're yeah. doing it okay. just in the middle of our show we'll cut away to you know and now we're reading from laura mipsum on the topic of xyz 
Okay. We cool. paid him a little bit more for that. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little top up. <laughs> no, no, that's that's really cool. Um, yeah. How did you? Oh, so you came across Scrum for the Web because a what was it? who was it? Hard. Uh, the hard times dot net is the uh, URL. So yeah, that's a a very funny website. That's it's basically the onion about punk rock. So, you know, most of the articles, no, I don't want to trivialize. A lot of the articles are about, you know, scene points or being a poser or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Tim from Rancid just said what? Uh, so it's, you know, God bless them. They found a uh, untapped niche, which was comedy about punk rock mm -hmm. and <laughs> scene culture. Uh, and they've, yeah, they've spun that out into a pretty successful business. They got acquired by... I want to say Revolver Media, um, okay. who publish like heavy metal and tattoo magazines and stuff. So, nice. anyway, yeah, Matt, Matt from that site, the founder editor, uh, is like, well, they're based in California. He's connected to like the Coil uh, network, and yeah, just sort of one thing led to another. So they web monetized their site, and did did you have you added web monetization then to your site as well? Janet, do you want to feel this one? I do not, Sam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did. Um, not NGL, not going to lie. See, I'm cool. I use abbreviations. Um, you must be very young. That, thank you. Part of that was motivated by all these, like all this business around the grant for the web. Like, yeah. I might not have other, or we might not have otherwise done it, but um, with that looming, yeah, we took the steps to just install Coil on the website. Um, Did you, you, when you say you might not have done it, is that because you've kind of evaluated it separately? Or if you evaluated separately, you might not have been persuaded to do it sort of thing? Or, it, yeah, well, I just wonder from like a creator point of view coming into the Coil, like. Sure. First, it probably wouldn't have been on our radar. So that's yeah. uh, just one <laughs> thing. But um you know, if all things being equal, if we were evaluating how we wanted to try to make money, even if that was just like a tip jar, it might not have been the first one that jumped to mind. Like Patreon certainly is uh, yeah. like leaps to mind as the way people try to make money through readers. Yeah. Um, and if not that, it might've been, you know, like e-commerce of just selling sort of drop ship t-shirts with nice designs or something like that. Like there's, a number of ways to make money on the web and coil does not have god bless them the market share to quite jump uh front of mind like maybe some of those other ways would yeah and how, uh, how did you find like from the technical standpoint like in uh, enabling your website did you use like the wordpress plugin that i'm uh, yeah. floating around now so <laughs> yeah we're we're just uh yeah it's a wordpress site so um the only part with any friction was trying to and Janet, I know, finds this fascinating, but the only point with friction was trying to um, authenticate our uphold account and like provide the necessary KYC documents to uphold to verify that we do actually exist as a business. Yeah. So I had to use my, uh, like, I'm, I'm self-employed, uh, so I used my corporate documents to authenticate us as a business uh, that, yeah, can get registered on uphold. Yeah, Fun so you, you went you went through the the business way then. That's that usually throws a few spanners in the works. I mean, we've tried it in various ways as well. So even just yeah. getting a bank account in the UK was a minefield for us. As soon as we said blockchain, it was like no, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> totally. Yeah, the the barriers to to uh, entry will probably have to be lowered before this can become you know a ubiquitous technology. Yeah, yeah, there's huge. I, I was looking at some of the other grant for the web projects and quite a few of them are working on how do we make the UA, the user experience or the creator experience or wh whichever way you're coming from it. It's just that bit easier. You know, how can we use coil without a coil extension sort of thing, all that, all those sorts of cool stuff. So, yeah, I, I think I had to provide, you know, documents that showed my business address and, you know, I'm just a schmuck in my house, like, uh, but <laughs> You know, luckily at that time I was renting space in a, um, like, like a WeWork, but not a we like a collaborative office space mm. place. So I had a mailbox there. Oh but, yeah, nice. 
yeah, for the average Yahoo, this is not too fun. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and so, yeah, you said you're about halfway through now. What's, what's kind of the end goal look like? So you're supporting another 60-ish writers, or have you got your kind of final set of writers already, and they're kind of seeing it? They just need to deliver sort of the pieces now. Janet, seeing as I just yammered about web monetization for five minutes, maybe I'll let you answer this. Okay, so what the next few months are looking like and beyond. Uh, yeah. So we don't have the rest of our writers, not the, all the rest of our writers lined up yet. Uh, we actually received so many pitches um, after one of Caitlin's tweets that we had to pause submissions for a time so we could catch up. We've received hundreds. Um, there's a lot to go through. So uh, yeah, we sort of um, review pitches on a rolling basis, kind of continuously, and um, each month has a theme, so we kind of deal with it one month at a time as we're going on. Yeah. Uh, so no, we don't have all our writers lined up, and so long as this airs sometime before June, I encourage your listeners to <laughs> consider pitching us. Um, yeah. yeah, so the, I guess, end goal of the project, Sam can speak to this sort of from the, the business perspective a little bit more, I, I imagine. Um, we're, we're seeing this as a six month experiment to yep. see if we can actually create a sustainable um, humor magazine uh, that follows the model that we're using. Yep. Uh, paying writers a fair rate, um, encouraging writers from underrepresented groups and emerging writers. Um, everything that we do is open source. Uh, so not just the content that we publish, but also basically all of our sort of policy documents, all of that, like our, our equity guidelines are yep. open source. Any, any other web magazine that comes along that wants to follow a kind of similar model to ours can take those guidelines and adapt them for themselves. And same with our submission guidelines. Um, and we're publishing, we're making open our uh, sort of diversity statistics, I guess, for the, the writers that were publishing, trying to just make everything open and accessible to everybody so that um, this is a model that, you know, we're experimenting with, but others can pick up and run with, um, yeah. sort of take the bits that are working best for them. And yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what this looks like, you know, at the end of June for us. Uh, as it is, you know, we don't have enough income coming in that we could continue <laughs> the model that we have right now yeah. past the grant period. Um, yep. that would be, it's awfully optimistic, but what you think are the 421 Canadian that we're currently making a month is not enough to sustain this <laughs> long term, <laughs> seeing as we have uh, one coil referral at the moment, I believe go on. Yep. <laughs> no, that's Jan all I had to say, Sam. Janet's married to a mathematician. Uh, so I'd encourage her to figure out a way to stretch 421 a month, uh, <laughs> That's as not far as it will go. To be clear, that's $4. Four. Yes. <laughs> you'd, call the, you'd call it four pounds and 21 <laughs> bob, I believe. I, I don't even know what the conversion is. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, it's like, it's like two pounds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just jumping off of one thing Janet said. Uh, yeah, the sort of goals at the end of this, other than, you know, any kind of like admin wrap up and sort of you know, sharing, sharing our reports with what's it called? Community.webmonetization.org or com? Uh, .org, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there's, uh, so yes. we'll publish our reports to the uh, web monetization web forum, yep. which maybe will be linked in the show notes or something like that. Um, but on top of that, like Janet was just saying, uh, we do not realistically expect we can sustain this pace of uh spending several thousand dollars a month on uh on contributions uh at least you know come july so um yeah that's what that's especially why the sort of creative commons open source resources are so important because whatever happens we do want to leave something that can last beyond this six month period, you know, yeah. um, not sort of limit our success to just being able to make a boatload of money and keep doing this, but to like 
share resources that at least could uh, have a long tail if anybody finds them and thinks that we provided something of value. Yeah, I, I expect there'll be iterations and iterations on this business model. It might be that people borrow stuff and put it on a normal site that's advertising driven, say, or something like, especially around your um, uh, equity guidelines um, from a community standpoint. But yeah, making it all open source is, I think, really kind of honorable thing to do, I guess. And I think it's all part of this kind of Web3 ecosystem that we see a lot of in the crypto sphere anyway, mm -hmm. um, kind of making it all open. People can borrow, but take the best bits and then build something greater sort of thing. It's that permissionless innovation. Mm -hmm. And that applies to pretty much everything, even in, you know, writing and <laughs> old, old school, old school tech, as I think. <laughs> yeah. And we really want people to do that. Um, like we're learning so much from this process and we're going to take that learning and take it forward beyond June somehow. Don't know how, yep. but it's valuable to us, but also we can share those lessons. We can share recommendations and other people can take the lessons that we've learned and, and create something new with them. Yeah. I suppose this is a little sort of touchy feely, but if, if nothing else, and I mean, even there is other things that we've just addressed, but if nothing else, like if all that comes out of this is, you know, several dozen writers get their first paid byline or their first byline, yeah. uh, feel a little more confident in themselves, like feel that they've developed their skills a little bit and are able to, you know, use that in their next opportunity, then we can take that as a win. Like just being able totally. to um, encourage, you know, a hundred plus young writers from all sorts of different backgrounds uh, in their careers, like, you know, that kind of like pay it forward energy does pre like at first glance feel a little touchy feely, but it also feels really good and it's not nothing. <laughs> and it like, it is good energy to put out into the world. Yeah, for sure. And you, you've taught all these like young writers um, how to pitch and how to do all that bit. So it may spark, spark the careers of, you know, a f even one like writer to kind of break it, break into the full time. And yeah, I think that's a really amazing thing to start with. I think what we're all saying is it's basically the velvet underground of websites. Like it, it, you know, it may sort of flame out brilliantly for a short time, but everybody that writes to us is going to uh, start a uh, multi-million dollar sitcom and film career. Yeah. In 10 yeah. years, everyone who's writing for the late night talk shows will be like, oh man, you got your first byline on widget too. <laughs> Thanks Sam and Janet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. Um, Okay, cool. Um, I suppose the last question I, I tend to ask on these is like, are there any other kind of projects that you want to kind of draw attention to in the space, maybe doing some great stuff on uh, kind of similar or anything on like the crypto side that you've kind of got interested in or, you know, anything that you might experiment with NFTs. I know have been everywhere, so, <laughs> but I've, we won't go I've into got, that. <laughs> it's not, yeah. not long enough. <laughs> I've got a few shout outs I'll do while yeah. uh, Janet tries to formulate how she's going to bullshit <laughs> an answer about this. <laughs> yeah, um, pass on this one. <laughs> like, yeah, we've got a bunch of peers, like I said before, in the Coil Comedy Bundle. Lots of very funny websites can be found at coil.com slash comedy. Yep. Uh, we talked about hard times. I'll shout out. Uh, base, uh, the Beaverton is basically Canada's onion. It's very funny, very good. Really good. They're on there. Um, let's see. There's a site called American Bystander that's had many like famous comedy writers write to it. Uh, Hard Drive, the Hard Times uh, video game magazine is very good. Uh, we've become friends with the Boston-based comedy website, the Boston Accent, who are part of this too. I could go on. Um, but beyond all the sites at the Coil Comedy Bundle, um, I do have some interest in reading more from uh, a, a web personality who calls themselves the blockchain, blockchain socialist. Um, okay. <laughs> I think they do both blog posts and podcasts and appear on other people's podcasts. Uh, they were quoted in a current, or a current affairs article on cryptocurrency and blockchains, like from a, a leftist point of view. Mm. Um, and I'd like to learn more about that because I'm mostly familiar with the sort of um, 
like knocks against blockchain and cryptocurrency. And these are things, you know, like maybe hoarding wealth or, you know, the ecological impact, like all mm. the, the sort of libertarian uh, thrust of a lot of crypto discourse. So I would like to, at least for my own edification, read more about, you know, an analysis from a leftist perspective uh, about, you know, what are the opportunities of this and do we think they're viable to create like parallel economies to this kind of neoliberal hellscape economy that we do find ourselves in? Could we build something uh, that is, in fact, you know, much more progressive and healthy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't that is, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, what plays out. Cause I, like you say, I know a lot of the, when we started out, a lot of the kind of talk online was quite revolutionary. I mean, mm -hmm. back in 2017, when I first got into it, it was definitely like, this is going to change the world, upend any governments. No one's going <laughs> to, no one's going to be able to stop it. And yeah, it's, it, I think it still simmers away. I think the other interesting thing there from like a, com coming from a, yeah non-capitalist point of view for me cryptocurrency has started like with with wall street in a way and is bringing that to the people whereas all other as today or every other thing we've kind of built has started with like people interacting with one another and building up economies to then have wall street at the top so yeah it'd be quite interesting to see how yeah we can use it i, I spoke to someone who does governance the other day um, and he was talking about making, you know, fairer societies in video games and stuff uh, on blockchain. And uh, I think it's massively emerging um, every 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 other day. At the moment, we see governance tokens going up and kind of how you corral these people people on the Internet sort of thing is always interesting. <laughs> the likes yeah. of Wall Street bets and stuff jump to mind where they're all gor gorillas or something <laughs> running around. <laughs> Um, <laughs> in that current affairs article I mentioned, I th was it there? I think it was there that they referenced a uh, Montreal startup called, I think, Eva or Eva, E-V-A dot co-op, I believe, what? that is trying to do a sort of, um, you know, an Uber by the, you know, controlled by the drivers, which I don't know if blockchain is necessary to facilitate that, but, um, you know, but getting away from the Uber model of like exploiting drivers to hoard wealth in Silicon Valley yeah. is a necessary way forward. So if something like the blockchain, like can be, you know, can have these use cases, then that's, that points a constructive way forward. Well, no, I, I definitely agree with this because we're building in web three and the idea is when it becomes decentralized, you align to users interest. And that's what kind of we, we've been talking about in a lot of ways like aligning so creators can make enough money to kind of keep doing what they're doing mm -hmm. having a whole ecosystem so say you have facebook on the blockchain facebook cannot compete with that because they have to please their shareholders at the end of the day mm. and that's how they're aligned but in web3 it's the token and it's everyone's working to collectively make more utility in that and make it more valuable sort of thing and that aligns you very well to your users rather than your shareholders sort of thing so i don't I, I i do think there'll be a flip where we move to web3 i don't think the old world can maneuver because they're constrained by it that's that's business at the moment <laughs> someone once said something about uh the importance of workers controlling the means of production <laughs> <laughs> can't remember who that was <laughs> Roger Marks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no cool um yeah, uh, no, that was a really great shout out. So I'll leave links to all those things uh, below. I think it's been a really interesting chat. Um, yeah, any any last kind of bits or we can uh, wrap up? <laughs> Janet, you do the closing words because I have, again, <laughs> gone a deep dive into something hmm? tangential. <laughs> My brain is addled with cryptocurrency now. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much for having us, Greg. It was really fun. Uh, talking about our site and I really hope that um, people listening and watching uh, will check it out and consider getting involved or consider you know taking a look at our guidelines and um, thinking about how they could put some of those ideas to use themselves too. Yeah definitely yeah. We'll, uh, we'll definitely point to you and uh, get some people there because I think yeah. there'll be more more out there who who need to take a look at these stuff. Cool. All that stuff can be found at <laughs> widgetmag.com if you 
are too lazy to consult the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, cheers, guys. So, yeah, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Just a Meme Podcast, where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Uh, please do get involved. Give us a like, send some comments and a review, and uh, please also subscribe. Um, yeah. And uh, lastly, thank you guys for joining. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks so much, Greg. <laughs>